How's it going, Sat? Um, just looking back at last year with the, specifically the offensive line, what did you see that they struggled most with and how has that been corrected among those five guys coming in this year? I think the one thing that we uh, improved on last year throughout the year was our pass protection. Uh, I think it goes back to how we teach pass protection technique, different tools that we give them. Uh, I think just going through the off season, the winter, the spring, the summer, uh, and even from just uh, scrimmage one last weekend to this week, we were dedicated to pass protection to make sure that we can, you know, protect Spencer and those guys so they can get the ball down the field. But um, I think, you know, that's the number one thing that we have to, we showed at times that we can run the ball uh, effectively. I think we just had to uh, continue to improve in our pass protection. And also, uh, what's the status of Chad Terrell? Uh, that, that goes through Coach Beamer. Uh, Coach Beamer mentioned some problems in the red zone and the scrimmage. Do you have any takeaways on that and kind of how the red zone install is going now another week into camp? Yeah, I think, you know, it's, you get in the red zone, especially you get low, it's all about timing and spacing. I think guys getting used to uh, each other, getting used to the plays. Uh, you know, early on in camp, that happens at times. I think they've done a nice job this week. Uh, we've, uh, you know, attacked the issues that we had with the spacing and the timing of the throws. Uh, so, you know, it's going to improve. Um, had a good week this week. Marcus Kush Beamer was talking about it in the after the scrimmage. There were a few moments where maybe Spencer held on the ball a little bit too long. I guess just how do you kind of rep that in practice? Is there a way to simulate that? I guess what, what goes into maybe, you know, getting that ball out a little faster? Is it a timing thing? I guess just what kind of goes into it? Yeah, I mean, it's just anything, just getting used to the offense. And, you know, he, again, he's improved this week. I mean, not a huge leap this week of getting the ball. I had a really good good deal uh, yesterday, the day before, and blitz pick up. And uh, it's good to go against our defense. Our defense is doing some cool things. And, I think it's really, you know, iron sharpening iron. I think it's really helping us. It's really helping Spencer. You get, sorry. Oh, go ahead. That's all right. I, I, obviously, Marshawn and uh, uh, Christian have been limited. I guess just with that, I guess what have you kind of seen from the other guys that have kind of taken in those roles, whether it's Juju or Dante or whoever else that's kind of running back? Yeah, you never know when you're going to get your opportunity. And, you know, that's what we told those guys, you know, a couple of days ago. You're going to have a shot to show what you can do that maybe you wouldn't have had this, you know, this many reps uh, if those guys would have been available. So, uh, they've done well. They've done a nice job. They all catch the ball well out of the backfield. Uh, you know, uh, each one, I don't really name them by name because I'll leave somebody out, but each one has their own little role and, and they've taken it and ran with it, but they've been productive. Seth, you've kind of talked about being impressed with the progress from scrimmage one through this week. Just as you enter the scrimmage on Saturday, what are some things you'd like to see the offense really do well as you kind of wrap up this camp portion of the preseason? Uh, one of the emphasis this week was just creating tempo and not like no huddle, all that stuff tempo, but just a rhythm and tempo of the game. Uh, you know, that starts with whether you are in a huddle or you're not in a huddle, just getting the plays ran and, and just the smoothness in the operation. Uh, Again, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but you know we went into this week saying we were going to do this, this, and this, and make a huge jump. And I think our kids and coaches have done a really nice job of doing so. So I think that uh, you know when we do go out there and scrimmage, I want to see us, you know, execute the offense. You know, even in scrimmage one, we we really didn't have any administrative penalties or personnel issues. So I mean, we're going to keep cleaning that up and, and getting good at that, and and Jen just getting a rhythm offensively and see where it takes us. Marcus, what um, expectations do you have for this offense this season? Uh, first of all, you know, we're going to take care of the football and we've got to be explosive. Uh, we've got to be explosive in the passing game. And how you do that, like we talked earlier, we've got to be good at pass protection. So we've got to be unique. We can't just do what we've always done and have one pass protection, drop back and throw it 50 times. We have to be unique in how we protect our edges, protect certain people, create different pockets, different launch points. But uh, you know, I think the one thing that we've been stressed in this whole camp is just take care of the ball. I mean, we had a chance to be plus 10 turnover margin last year. Uh, as many takeaways as our defense got, but we just kept turning the ball over. So our guys have done a really nice job uh, to that thus far. And I think if we do that and, and we can protect the pocket, protect the pass, we have a chance to, to be pretty good. Marcus, uh, a couple of weeks ago, Clayton, Clayton White was saying what a big adjustment it was for him to have to go against SEC offensive coordinators the way they called games. For you, last year, how big of an adjustment was it to go against SEC caliber defensive coordinators? Luckily, we were distracted most of the time. I mean, we were having to find you know unique ways of just who's going to play quarterback and then what can they do, and then you know we we just we were open to whatever it took to try to win a football game. So luckily, I think I was distracted most of the season from who in the heck we were playing from a from a coordinator standpoint. Uh, really wasn't, you know, I didn't really go in or out of a game thinking or really shocked at what we saw. 
Uh, so hopefully we can continue to just focus on ourselves and get better. Shane was real complimentary of Luke Doty at the scrimmage and how he's taken another step as a quarterback. Just what have you seen from him? Uh, you know, it's year two. It's like we say all the time, he's been in this offense now for two years, so he should improve. And uh, he's done a really nice job of getting the ball out on time. He understands protections. He understands the verbiage of the offense. He understands why we're doing things. Uh, so he's done a really nice job of, of getting completions and making sure we're getting in and out of the right plays, uh, you know, which is an improvement from where he was this time last year, obviously just because of the experience that he got last year. So I look forward to him just keep competing and comp competing because we're going to need him to win games this year at some point, and that's how he's approaching it. And uh, he's doing a really, really nice job, which we're not surprised. Um, Nate Atkins and Austin Stogner were in here a couple of days ago talking about how well they complement each other. What have you seen from your tight end group and just kind of the way they mesh together? Very physical. Uh, you know, Stogner has, has got a lot of length and has an unbelievable catch radius and can go up and high point the ball and be a mismatch in the red zone and on third down. Uh, Nate is a coach's kid who you can tell is very, very, very intelligent, has a high football IQ, who is very, very, very tough, who will, you know, he will strike you. And, uh, you know, that edge that he gives us in that room uh, is, is going to pay great dividends throughout the season. But both of those guys have just stepped right in and just, you know, within this offense, it feels like they've been here forever. But uh, they're both going to have great roles. And, uh, you know, if they play well, we have a chance to do good. So you kind of talked about the offensive line. Just how would you kind of evaluate that competition at right tackle between Dylan and, and Tyshawn? And is there kind of a clear cut favorite there right now? Uh, I wouldn't say clear cut right now. I mean, we want to try to compete again. This says, it is coach talk, I guess, but we, we want to compete through the second scrimmage before we make any final decisions, but the competition, you know, makes everything better. So it's good to have that competition. You know, it's sprinkled all the way through you know, the entire line of scrimmage. So I think they've both improved pass protection wise. And, and again, you know, Tyshawn, just his athletic ability and toughness and attitude, you know, gives us a spark when he's in the game. So they both, you know, bring a lot to the table. Marcus, correct me if I'm wrong. I might have been reading into it too much, but it looked like Case and Henry was getting to run with the twos a little bit. I guess just what have you kind of seen from that freshman uh, offensive line group so far? And, and I guess what I guess can you kind of expect from guys in that position, at least in year one, really? I'm excited about all the young freshmen. Um, Again, I'm sitting here listening to myself talk, and I'm, I'm just gritting my teeth. Like, I sound like those guys that you get so miserable hearing on the radio. But, like, we don't I – mean, those guys are playing, playing, playing at a high level. Uh, it's a big adjustment for those young guys to come in and play SEC football. They've done a nice job when we, you know, put them in situations with the older guys of competing and being able to hold their own. Uh, we're looking forward to watching them develop, you know, throughout the season because, again, we've got to develop depth at, that, at the position, at tackle, guard, every position. And I think, you know, there might be a couple of those guys by game seven or eight that have a chance to, you know, if there was an injury, go in and, and be, you know, get us through a game and be productive. Hey, Marcus, obviously Marshawn and uh, Christian were held out of the scrimmage on Saturday. Um, who's really stepped up from, I mean, the rest of the group? Um, I mean, uh, Well, you have Juju, who is, uh, you know, very, very productive and, uh, you know, just got to make sure that you're not trying to carry the ball 50 times a game with him with his frame and we'll get beat up a little bit. So, you know, LC and Amos, those guys have, did a really nice job of stepping up and with the opportunities that they got and both had some explosive runs and, and did some good things in pass protection. So, you know, we feel confident if they have to play, if they get to play, that they'll go in there and they'll do what they're supposed to do and allow us to have success. Coach, with higher expectations this year and maybe additional pressure, do you feel any? And if so, how do you handle that? Just with, especially on the offensive side of the ball with the uh, addition of Rattler and Stogner and such. Pressure? Not at all. I mean, we had pressure all year last year. And I'm not trying to slight that question. That's a great question. But I mean, you know, our kids have felt pressure since uh, day one last year and sense of urgency. And we have a standard of performance. We all also understand the standards, the minimum, and we can raise that at any time. But our kids, you know, they feel it every day and in a good way. I think it drives us, uh, you know, and pushes us forward to do things, to do these hard things that we have to continually do every day. I think that's one of the main focal points of just, you know, all eyes on us. Let's see what we can do. So last year, offensively, the home and road splits were pretty drastic. As you ended this year with a couple big road games on the schedule, just what does this team have to do to be better away from home? Just play football. And again, I'm not trying to be, you know, slight with that. I mean, we just have to keep playing. You know, last year was year one. Uh, the culture was being formed. Uh, standards were being set. 
people were getting to know everybody, like expectations of what Coach Beamer and what the staff wanted. We have to just continue to play these games. Now, if we played those games and we lost those games in vain and we didn't learn anything from them, shame on us. But I think every loss that we had last year, we learned something from it. Uh, which allowed us to finish like we did at the end of the season. But we definitely got to, you know, coach has done a really nice job of, you know, he'll change where we do individual at practice, you know, not tell us just to kind of flip everything in our mind where, you know, like you're on the road, you know, we're doing different drills at different spots without telling a sudden change. So uh, Coach Beamer's done a really nice job of just trying to prepare our minds as coaches and players, how, you know, to change your mindset and change how you feel out there on the field, see if we can, you know, if that helps us operate when we do leave williams Bryce. What's different about Spencer uh, right now versus uh, when y'all ended the spring? Um, there's a ton different. I mean, he was just kind of playing football in the spring and trying to learn, and he was basically memorizing pictures uh, to the point in the summer. He did a really nice job of learning the offense. Uh, through camp, he came out on fire, a uh, very accurate passer. Uh, again, we're challenging him to get the ball out even faster. Uh, and I told Coach this the other day, when I say things like that, a lot of times, you know, Spencer's got to get the ball out faster. Spencer's got to do this. I'm not saying Spencer's, uh, Spencer sucks. He needs to do this better. Spencer's really, really good, like uh, really, really good. And so we're trying to make him even better by getting that thing out on time. Uh, the cool thing to me is from where Spencer was Saturday in the scrimmage to where he is now is like 100, 100 times. Uh, just the uh, couple of things we've been focusing on this week, uh, he's just um, just a confidence and understanding of pass protection, of, of where his guys are going to be. We've eliminated some things like we narrowed down. This is what we're going to be. This is how we're you know this is how we're going to attack. And these are the throws and the runs that he likes. And I just think there's a comfort and just a quiet confidence building in him this week of how he's worked and how he's attacked and how our, how our coaches have coached him and and got him prepared. So from from the scrimmage one to now has been really really good. Set on the getting the ball out quicker. I mean, are you guys sitting there with a stopwatch saying, "Hey, this thing needs to be out in like 1.8 seconds," or is like, I mean, how do you rep that in practice? Uh, it's something just to do I mean, with footwork, it? footwork, and the timing of your footwork allows you to get the time. You know, the timing of the route, how deep is the route, and so I mean, off of one hitch, two hitch. If he's sitting there hitching in the pocket, he's probably not on time. And again, you know, just we don't have a stopwatch, but you can just feel it. Like this throw might be a three plant, so he goes one, two, three, plants his back foot, the ball comes out, and if it goes one, two, three, and there's a little bit of hitch, then he's a little bit late. So we measure it with his footwork. Coach Bean was pretty complimentary about Xavier Leggett after that scrimmage. Just what have you seen from him growth-wise coming in from the spring to summer to where he is right now? Uh, I mean, one, just his size and uh, his size and athletic ability, his competitiveness, his competence of understanding. He can play uh, both X and Z. His understanding of the offense. Uh, it, coach challenged him. I mean, he'll go up and attack a ball in a heartbeat. Like he's freakish like that. But he had two or three catches or two or three catches. Last week, where he just kind of let the ball get on his body, and coach, you know, challenged him to hey, attack the football. And consecutive days, he went up and made just unbelievable catches, just going to attack the ball. You know, freakish type uh, athletic plays. Uh, I think just his strength uh, and again mobility is just going to allow him to do a lot of different things, which will allow him to be a lot more productive. Thank you, guys.